My name is Craig Allen. I work for Alpha City News. At least, I usually do. It's been about a month since I've been back into work. It's been about a month since I've been back in the real world, too, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I'm actually recording this for my psychologist. He asked me to record these things to simply put down my thought processes on a normal day and so he could review it and possibly help me more. You see, here's the thing. The world ended. Everything went away. Uh, Alpha City was gone. Lindsay was gone. But I somehow stayed behind. I somehow stayed real. How do you how do you explain that to people that you spent an unknown amount of time as a as a ghost as a just a formless floating intelligence watching everyone else but unable to interact I saw different universes appear and disappear and then I came back to what I thought was Alpha City, but which I learned wasn't the real Alpha City. And now I am back, and I am real again, and I can interact with things, I can feel things, and I can't walk through walls or... <sighs> it just feels so strange. I feel disembodied. I feel out of place. And who do you explain that to? Dr. Escalapius, when I told him I was having trouble, he did point me towards a psychologist who has some knowledge of the field, as it were. He was a sidekick in his youth and got out of the game and became a psychologist and has dealt with various problems for various people who wear masks. So he has a certain amount of grasp for the weirdness that can happen. But at the same time, even Lindsay, who went through her own version of it, she, just before the world ended, got lost inside structure of the living building, and when she came out, everything was unreal. It's not the same. It's hard to feel like I can explain things to her. But I suppose the story of what happened is worth mentioning. There was a war between two alien, possibly godlike species, the, the neo-deities and the anti-gods. The anti-gods had managed to find something called the Revelation Engine, which is a, a, a piece of technology that is left over from the last universe that existed. Uh, the one before this one. And apparently it was, in, it was capable of incredible things. It would have given the anti-gods the power to take over the world, take over the universe, do anything they wanted. And the Neo-Deities didn't want that to happen. They wanted to either leave the engine where it was or keep it safe from the people who would misuse it. The anti-gods, basically. And so, there was a war over the Revelation engine, part of which was documented by a human named Johnny Munson. He's a good kid, a boy photographer. He's actually about 16 years old, and he has an incredible talent for getting shots. So he went with the Neo-deities, as he had done a number of times before, and he chronicled the war. And when it came to the final battle on the planet of despair, the home of the anti-gods, Johnny ended up being the one to activate the Revelation Engine, and he told it to destroy itself. Actually, how he put it was he said he told it to go away, and it interpreted it 
well, in the way something from another universe would, I guess. What actually happened was it broke itself into four parts. Five, actually. One stayed where it was, trying to do what Johnny had told it, but missing the other parts, it wasn't getting enough power, so it started leeching the energy from the universe around it. There was a growing circle of just nothingness as it pulled everything into it to try and operate. One piece was cast into the far past and came into the possession of Rama Ultra, uh, who ran a, was attempting to take over the galaxy uh, far in the past, shortly after the Earth had cooled. He used Earth as its base and had tried a number of times to extend his, uh, his empire from the beginning of Earth to the end. He used it to widen his empire in the past and to make another attempt to take over the future. The second piece got thrown into the far edge of the psychosphere, which is where the human mind and the subconscious really dwell. It's Presto the witch ended up having to go there to fight an old enemy who had come into possession of that piece and was using it to power his evil psychomagics. The third piece ended up landing sometime in the past in a building on the edge of Alpha City and it animated that building that was structure, the living building. He was uh, one of the weirder heroes around, but You know, for a living, moving building, he always did the right thing and was always there when we needed him. He ended up getting terribly hurt in an attack by a group called the Wrecking Crew, who had been hired to destroy a building downtown by a business rival or something. Things ended too quickly for me to get the final story on that. And it looked like he was dying when he was moved back to his normal resting place. Lindsay had decided to go inside to see if she could find what a structure was, basically. Homeless people had been reported living in there, but no matter what you offered them, they didn't want to talk about what it was like inside, something about making a deal with structure and respecting him. Dr. Escalapius had been inside to try and heal him, along with Sebastian If and... uh Well, they would have brought Presto, but she was already in the psychosphere. So Lindsay made her way in, and she got lost inside the very strange interior of structure. He's not... He's not... On the inside, he's not like a normal building. She's told me a little about it, but... uh, Just like my experience, it's hard to describe. When she came to the center of structure, though, she found the piece that had animated him, and he was dying. And he gave her the piece, and asked her to take it where, it, to where it should be. When she came out, she, uh, found the universe as I last saw it. I had somehow survived the destruction of the universe, the Rama Ultra coming forward and battling Captain Stupendous over Alpha City had done something. It interacted with the peace in the psychosphere and the the peace in structure and the peace that was eating the universe and the missing peace, I suppose. And everything just came apart and went away. Except for me. I don't know how long I was just floating in grayness, in nothing. But various universes came up and down. I remember one in particular being a funhouse mirror of Alpha City. It was... I ran a underground uh, radio station in a city called Omega City, and everything that was good was bad, and everything that was bad was good. Anyway, that didn't last long, and everything went away again, and then I thought I was back in the real Alpha City, one where 
Superheroes had just recently appeared, where Radiant was the first hero instead of Captain Stupendous, and I could see people's stories. I could see the lines that led them in, into the past and into the future, and I thought I had been turned into some sort of cosmic version of the reporter I'd been before in the real world. But I saw a, a battle between Jackie Quick and some new villain call him, calling himself the Chromium Swan, and uh, as part of that, uh, a bit of the the element that was powering the Chromium Swan got dislodged, and I caught it when it flew off of him. It was the first thing I'd touched, been able to touch, since the last time I'd been in the real Alpha City, and it showed me that what I was seeing was just the top layer of a welter of probabilities. The universe still existed, but the disparate elements were just... It was like water that was boiling. The entire universe was there, but it was shifting and changing because of the power that was being put out by these five items. The the thing that had been powering the Chromium Swan, I have no idea how he got it anymore, but it was the final piece, the fist fifth piece of the revelation engine and he was using it to power a device he was going to use to kill his family and destroy their business but i suppose some people are always going to be small-minded anyway shortly after i saw it i saw Lindsay again she had made it out of structure and she was the only thing that wasn't shifting and changing and colorless and the two of us together, using the part that I had and the part that she had of the Revelation engine, we used them to find the third piece. Captain Stupendous and Rama Ultra had been locked in hand-to-hand -hand combat in some arena that one of them had constructed mentally. They were evenly balanced and dueling over the piece that Rama Ultra had used to expand his empire. Our arrival distracted Rama Ultra enough that uh, Captain Stupendous was able to take the upper hand. And he was defeated, and we had three pieces. And the three of us, with the pieces we had working together, managed to make it into the psychosphere, and we found Presto. She had just managed to defeat her enemy which is an amazing thing. I forget what his name is, but to be powered by something that was strong enough to change the entire universe and to have Presto be able to overcome that, well, she's an amazing woman. There's a reason why she's one of the forefront superheroes in our world. Anyway, so now we had the four pieces that had been lost and I can't describe the harrowing things we went through to get back to where the main part of the Revelation engine was, but we fought our way back and we managed to reunite it with the pieces. And whole again, we told it to hide itself. That was the mistake that Johnny had made in his speed. He'd asked it to destroy itself and that was just not something that was possible. It couldn't turn its power on itself, I think, was the explanation. But we told it to reverse what had been done to the universe and to once again put itself beyond mortal hands so it couldn't be used again. And we found ourselves back in the city. Things weren't exactly the same. I've got a dog named Kilroy. He's beautiful. He's just a mutt I picked up, but he's a great guy, and he's a good friend, and I have eight years of memories of him, and I had never seen him before a month ago. I didn't have a dog before. I find myself plagued with strange dreams and with feelings that none of this is real either. I worry that I'm going to wake up and just be a ghost again. 
I've actually walked through doors. Uh, excuse me, I've walked into doors trying to walk through them. There were some questions at work because I seem disconnected. So as I said, I spoke to Dr. Escalapius and he put me in touch with his psychologist. And he's asked me to record all of my thoughts every time I get lost in one of these. And it happened this morning. I woke up and I looked at the world around me and I was just waiting for it to fade away again, for me to fade away again. It's getting better, though. It is. I, I talk to him a couple of times a week. And I'm almost ready to go back into work, I think. Slowly, the memories of this world are... Well, they're subsuming, I suppose, the memories of the time when I was living in nowhere. I'm going to give a copy of this to Dr. Escalapius. He's also recording uh, stories from Presto and from Captain Stupendous, and I know Lindsay is making her own as a kind of chronicle of what happened during the time that the universe wasn't. There are a bunch of people in uh, Eisner University who study various things about the universe who are going to be fascinated by this, and he thinks it's a important to have a record of things like this happening. I understand that. I wish him well with it. I don't... I would be very happy if I woke up tomorrow and I had no inkling whatsoever that any of this had gone on. I just want to be a reporter and spend time with Lindsay and be small and normal. I love covering superheroes. I love being a newspaperman. I love being in the know, but this is this is something that's a little beyond me. I was blessed, I suppose, to be part of something amazing. But at the same time, if I hold on to the knowledge of what happened, I don't know if I can hold on to my real life. And hands down, in the choice between the amazing and the normal, I'll take the normal. I'm not a hero. I'm a reporter. I'm a newsreader, actually. Lindsay is a reporter. I get news from people like them, and I pass it on to the world, and I'm very happy with that. I love being a witness to the world of superheroes. But I've found out I'm not a part of it. I'm not cut out for that. In a way, maybe that's part of the problem. You know, everyone figures in the right circumstances they could step up and become the hero of the movie. They could be the guy who comes out of the crowd and is the unexpected superhero all of a sudden. And I found out that I'm not that person. And I suppose that's a bit of what is troublesome for me. It's tough to find out what your limitations are. But then I look at the job I love and the woman I love and this dog who I've had forever and just met and I like my life, and I want that to be back. The doctor was right. Talking about this stuff doesn't make it easier. Talking about it gives it a sense of normalcy. <sighs> well, tomorrow I go back to my job full-time. It will be an interesting experience. But hopefully the day-to-day -day work will be exactly what I need to finally let all of this go and stop being afraid. Whether or not 
it's easy or hard. It's something that has to be done. Life has to go on. And my life is at Alpha City News. So, Dr. Dr. Escalapius, whoever listens to this at Eisner University, well, I hope that you will tune in to Alpha City News. We'll be there to tell you what's happening. Ah, Lindsay's going to be home in a few minutes. I think I'm going to start making dinner. This has been Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. You can find us at rhymeswithgeek.com or at iTunes. If you'd leave us a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. If you'd like to get in touch with us for questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to write to alphacitynews at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.